She's broken, waiting for a savior, hoping for someone to take her out of here. Yeah. Well, I remember always um, telling myself, you know, I'm never gonna put up with this. You know, I, I saw my mom is so weak, like why doesn't she get us out of this? You know, I, I will never live in that tree. One of the really sad things about abuse is that it's never limited to the individual that you're directly abusing at that time. It affects your relationships with your children, it affects your relationship with your friends and family. As a leader of Her Journey, I hear a lot from the women about their concerns about their children. Not just young, but adult children. Um, you know, they've seen now the patterns that were done in the house when their children were younger now being lived out. Looking back I can see how my father taught me his belief systems indirectly, how he thought his verbal and physical abuse was acceptable and okay and I have in turn passed that along to my son. Um, the abuse that was severe, I would hear him beating her up and then taking her to the hospital and coming into the bathroom to a bathtub full of blood. I remember laying in bed at night, listening to my father yell at my mother, scream at my mother, until she would submit to whatever view he was trying to communicate or force her to acknowledge at that time. I felt like the abuse was my fault sometimes. When I, when I didn't clean my room or I did something wrong, I, I felt like it was my fault that they were yelling at each other. It put a lot of pressure on me to look at my behavior because I thought I was the reason my mom would get beat up or I was the reason we would move. I felt like I needed to protect my mom a, a lot actually um, from my dad. I felt like whenever he yelled he was going to do something violent and so I needed to like get my mom out of the house. When I witnessed my parents' arguments and my dad's abuse towards my mother, I can remember trying to pick sides. It was like I got pulled into this very adult argument over finances or raising the children and trying to judge who was right, trying to pick whose side that I should be on. When I was growing up and I witnessed the abuse, how it impacted me was it created a huge safety, safety deficit in um, myself, I realized that um, no one was safe. I saw the abuse that I was experiencing start to affect my kids in ways that, um, you know, each of them dealt with it differently. My oldest got really rebellious and angry. My uh, second daughter got very withdrawn and very quiet and very people-pleasing. My son dealt with rounds and bouts of, of anger. I had a lot of hatred towards my mom, towards my dad, towards my stepdad, and I just couldn't understand why God would let all of that happen to me. Uh, some of the negative things that I learned was to yell when you wanted something, uh, to not listen to somebody else's needs or wants. So I, I definitely then adopted some of those beliefs and. Um, even from that age of 12 and 13 began to it, it began a pattern I believe that you know if I'm frustrated you know if I'm punching a wall at least I'm not punching a person it just created a shell around me of the world is a place that there's only one person that's going to take care of me and that's me um, I had no understanding that by standing over someone and yelling them that and yelling at them that I was potentially degrading that person. As a child, I felt that abuse was how I was supposed to handle life. My belief was that I was gonna hit before I got hit in order to protect myself. So I see my oldest son start to reflect some of my abusive behavior, uh, and especially in his interaction with his younger siblings, and that since he is the bigger and stronger one that he will use his words, use his body, um, even hit 
to get his way if he thinks that he can get away with it. I think the abuse that I witnessed handicapped me to know what was better, to, to see the difference between a normal relationship and a violent relationship. I measured abuse as beating up and hospital and broken this and broken that. And I didn't see the progression of verbal abuse to physical abuse. I think I had been trained to feel so powerless that the only way I felt like I had any control was to, um, to act out physically. The final thing that showed me I had to leave and get help was when I started seeing my son behave that way towards me. It's very important to break the cycle of abuse because if you don't, you will pass it on to your children whether you want to or not. And if they don't learn correct behavior from their parents, they're going to continue the same behaviors into their future families and marriages and into their parenting. It's been a cycle in my family for generations. Although it may have been looked at as normal, it's not normal and it destroys families, it destroys lives. And I don't want my children to go through that. I want it to be different for them. I realized that I no longer had to be abusive myself. I started to realize that I wanted to love, that I wanted to treat others with respect. When my mom began to get help, it, it impacted me. Like, I, I could get help too, you know? So, um, I, I could uh, stop the habits that I had, like stop the yelling, and actually learn productive tools from my mom and other people outside of that, and actually reach out to people. Now that I'm, I'm leading a Her Journeys class, I see my kids, um, you know, they're like, it's Wednesday, Mom, are you teaching arms today? So they're really excited about it. They know the importance of it, and they've seen the effects of it. So it's, it's brought a lot of joy, and it, and it seems really important to them for not only me, but to reach out for other families. Growing up in an abusive home certainly lends an individual towards abusive behavior as a way to medicate pain. but any individual chooses their abusive behavior. I chose to abuse my wife and my children, and I now choose to treat them lovingly and to not abuse them. I'm just so grateful to ARMS that they were there through the hardest time when I left. I'm really thankful for the ARMS program and the Mankind class, and I really appreciate the uh, kind of the continuing care that the Mankind program provides and allowing uh, men who have completed to come back on a monthly basis. I feel that it's very important that individuals support the work that ARMS is doing because for myself, I had tried for 18 years through various pastors and various counseling situations to find the exact help that we and I needed in order to stop the abuse, in order to start living in a way that was God-honoring and in a way that was peaceful. Right. It, it's really important to, um, for people to support ARMS because the work that they're doing is I enormous. I mean, I see it as somebody who's gone through it. Um, I see it as a leader, how it affects these the lives, both of the women, of their families, their children, and the men um, who go through the programs as well. 